Hello, my Nakama Tachi. This is Joy Girl with episode three of Let's Talk Wano. And if you guys have been enjoying this arc as much as I have and would like to continue discussing Wano, then please don't forget to subscribe. And I would also really appreciate it if you guys could all like this video and drop a comment below to help with the algorithm. Since the raid on Onigashima started, the matchups have been shuffled here and there. But after reading the last chapter, it's starting to feel right. You know, it feels like we're getting close to our final matchups, which is what I wanted to discuss in today's video, mainly in regard to the Straw Hats, because this also does feel like the arc, you know, where we will finally get to see, you know, a significant fight for each of them of their own, similar to how they got, you know, individual fights in Ennius Lobby. And I will actually be looking at their, you know, Ennius Lobby matchups, as well as, you know, some previous fights from previous arcs to see whether we can use these as a guide to see how, you know, their matchups will play out for Wano. So starting with Usopp, who in Ennius Lobby fought the weakest member of the CP9, but a significant one because Spandam was the chief of the CP9. And, you know, we all cheered for Usopp, partly because of Spandam's, you know, despicable actions, uh, particularly against Robin. And so if we were to, you know, use this as a guide, then I think the closest to Spandam in the Wano arc would be Orochi. And now that Orochi has, you know, lost most of his heads, if he is even still alive, then I think he would be severely weakened uh, so that Usopp could take him on. But a part of me thinks that, you know, this is also a matchup that makes a lot of sense because of Usopp's utility. So in previous arcs, Usopp may not fight the strongest opponent, but still, you know, manages to defeat a significant opponent, you know, either based on their position or their tricky devil fruit that only Usopp can deal with. You know, so for example, Perona or Sugar. And I initially thought that Bao Huang would be the Perona or Sugar of the Wano arc, but it doesn't seem like she has a devil fruit that only Usopp can handle. So this matchup, you know, uh, doesn't seem likely anymore. In saying all of that, part of me loves the idea of Usopp having to, you know, having to take on an opponent who is a physical threat to him this time. Which is why I like the idea of Usopp, you know, going, um, going against page one. And this matchup was, you know, teased already in the raid. And now that Big Mom has knocked out page one, which is sure to have, you know, severely weakened him. So maybe now Usopp stands a chance. However, if the physical gap is too big, then I could see Chopper taking on page one instead of Usopp. So in Ennius Lobby, the first time that we witnessed Chopper's uncontrollable monster point was when he was fighting against Kumadori, uh, who had the fifth highest Duraki within the CP9. And in Ennius Lobby, uh, and in Alabasta, Chopper fought, teamed up with Usopp to fight against Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas. So Chopper in the past has, you know, typically fought against the fifth or the fourth strongest uh, within the enemy's crew. Chopper has already done something significant in the arc, you know, in healing the allies who were infected by Queen's virus, as well as fighting against Queen, you know, briefly, you know, clashing against Queen himself, and now has the important task of healing Zoro. But I still feel like Chopper will get a, will get a significant fight of his own. And because of his monster point, I thought that Chopper would be fighting against the numbers, but... But then recently we found out that Chopper has an ace up his sleeve where, where he can extend, you know, monster point to 30 minutes, although doing so will have its risk. And we haven't seen what that risk is yet, and it only seems like he has 10 minutes left. But we've seen in the past that Chopper is able to take up to three Rumble Balls, which, you know, which poses um, a risk to everyone around him, but grants him, you know, destructive, more, even more destructive capabilities. And so even though during the time skip, he mastered the ability to, you know, to gain the strength of three Rumble Balls whilst only taking one, maybe after, um, after Caesar Clown's modification, Chopper will now, um, perhaps Chopper will have to, you know, take more than one again to, uh, to gain even further abilities or to extend it even further. But of course, doing so will have even greater risks. So I think it's possible that we will see Chopper having to resort to take this risk of the extended Rumble Bull in the arc, but it will be, it will have to be in the face of someone, you know, who pushes him to do so. So I think 
Being one of Kaido's high-ranking officers, Page One would be the perfect matchup to do this against. But if Page One is Usopp's matchup all the way, then I could see Chopper using this ability to to clear the way for everyone and take out you know um, take out a multiple of Kaido's numbers. Or another team matchup with Usopp and Chopper would be fun as well. So the next few are matchups which have already been set up, and I don't really see them changing, which I think you know is perfect so far. And these I'm um, starting with Jinbei versus Who's Who, and we don't really have you know a previous guide or a basis for Jinbei because this is you know the official fight. This is the first fight of Jinbei as an official Straw Hat member, but I think Who's Who seems to be a perfect match uh, in terms of Jinbei's strength. As a former warlord whose strength is, you know, up there along with the monster trio, if he isn't going to be fighting one of the calamities who all seem to be preoccupied right now, then I think then obviously, you know, the next in line would be one of the Toby Ropo. And who's who I think makes sense because from what we've seen of Who's Who, it seems like he might be the strongest, or at least one of the strongest, um, in terms of the Toby Ropo. So this makes a lot of sense. There's also that level of intrigue that was added by Who's Who's comment that he that he saw Jinbei when he was still a warlord. So there's that piece of history to look forward to as well. So next up, Frankie versus Sasaki. And in Ennius Lobby, we saw Frankie square up against Fukuru, who placed just after Kumodori in terms of Doriki. And Kumodori was, of course, you know, Chopper's opponent. And I'm not saying that Chopper is stronger than Frankie because he fought someone stronger than Frankie's opponent. Because if we remember correctly, Chopper had a harder time going up against Kumodori than Frankie did up against Fukuru. And Frankie also had the additional task of having to subdue the the uncontrollable, you know, rampaging monster point chopper. Also, Frankie was briefly involved in the clash against Luchi with Luffy, and he also saved Robin. So even though his one-on-one -on -one fight was against someone who was weaker than Chopper's opponent, he was he played a bigger role in the arc overall, and he was more involved in the arc, whilst also not being pushed to his very last limits. We also have to remember that Frankie fought against Doflamingo's officer, Senor Pink, in the Dressrosa arc. So for Wano, I like this matchup against Sasaki a lot. You know, I think Frankie has always been in that upper middle level of strength within the Straw Hats, but that we haven't ever gotten to see what he's fully capable of yet. So I think it's possible that we'll get to see a new weapon or that he'll use an advanced technique that we haven't seen as Sasaki proves to be um, as, as Sasaki proves to be a serious opponent. And I do think that Sasaki will be a formidable opponent because as we've seen, you know, he prepared to take on Yamato and he and not to mention that he was also one of the Tobi Roppo who was seriously, you know, contesting and competing for that for that role to be able to fight and challenge one of the calamities. Next up, Robin versus Black Maria. And Robin has been part of the crew for quite a while now, but this matchup against Black Maria is probably the one that makes the most sense. You know, this is probably the first major one-on-one -on -one fight that she's had since practically Skypea. And I think I like this one the most. You know, it makes the most sense apart from them being both uh, multi-limbed beautiful women, they both have that sense of femme fatale, which I love. And this matchup has already been set up, so there's not heaps to say on it, except for the fact that I'm super excited because I think Robin's up there in terms of, you know, one of the most underused straw hat combatants. Now, Brooke. Brooke is currently helping uh, Robin, most likely fighting Black Maria's subordinates, but I would like to see Brooke, you know, get a good match of his own. And I think that Perispero would be a good match for Brooke, but it seems like Nekomamushi will be taking on Perispero. And Brooke also did get a good showing in Whole Cake Island, so maybe he won't get such a spotlight in Wano because of that, which would be a shame because it would be awesome to see each of the Straw Hats, you know, take on Kaido's top officers. A Brooke versus Who's Who match would be good as well, maybe if Jinbei moves on to take Jack. Um, you know, maybe maybe Inu and Neko or Neko get defeated, so maybe Brooke 
uh, could take on either of those opponents. But in saying that, I do think I think the Dukes are you know in for some uh, in for some wins. <laughs> But in saying that, if Jack does manage to defeat Inu, then I could also picture Yamato going against Jack as well. I've mentioned before that I think there's some sort of history between the two ever since I found out that the two are the same age. So I've always been interested to find out the relationship between Kaido and Jack ever since I found out that Jack was a part of Kaido's crew, you know, since 20 years ago when Odin fought Kaido because Jack would have only been eight years old at the time. So I think it's possible that the two have sort of like a father-son relationship and since Yamato and Jack were the same age, maybe this storyline could play a part in their matchup and we could see their interactions as, as kids through a flashback. You know, perhaps Yamato and Jack were really close or, you know, the complete opposite. You know, maybe they were rivals and seeing as, seeing as Yamato always hated his father, which only, which only strengthened after the Odin incident, so perhaps Kaido treated Jack like a son instead. You know, your usual shonen drama, which I think could add, you know, a very interesting twist to this storyline. But let me know what you think of this, you know, um, <laughs> drop a comment below. But going back to the matchups, next we've got Nami and Ulti. And you know my thoughts on this, this is a fight that's already been set up. And currently Ulti has a hole in her stomach, courtesy of Big Mom. And I think this is a good reason for her to weaken so that Nami could take her on. We also saw recently that Nami's, um, you know, acquired Zeus back. So this power up, uh, with this pa new power up, I think that places Nami in a good position to deal some damage against the Tobi Ropo, who already is weakened. Also, this matchup follows suit of Nami getting pretty formidable female opponents. You know, we saw Miss Doublefinger in Alabasta and Khalifa in Ennis Lobby. And in Alabasta, Miss Doublefinger was the second highest ranking officer within, um, within the enemy crew. And this seems like it could be the case here as well because Ulti is only one of two of Kaido's Tobiropo. Next up, Sanji, and we've got his matchup, Sanji versus Queen, and that is perfect, you know. It makes sense. Sanji always fights the second strongest officer. Queen has some connection to Judge. They both seem to love women. It's blonde against the blonde. And this is probably the matchup that I'm looking forward to the most, mainly because of just the pure entertainment uh, potential that we can get out of this one. We're also seeing, you know, the parallels to earlier arcs again here. So in Enya's lobby, you know, Sanji couldn't fight Khalifa. So Nami took over and Sanji moved on to Jabra. And in Wano, you know, Robin's taking over to fight Black Maria, whom Sanji couldn't fight. But hooray, because we're getting to see Sanji versus Queen instead. And if Sanji is fighting Queen, then Zoro is fighting King. And we're gonna have to find a way for Marco and King to stop fighting first. Maybe, maybe Marco heals Zoro and then moves on. Or, or maybe Marco beats King, but not enough to completely take King out of the battle. And then so we'll see an injured Zoro versus an injured King. You know, Zoro could even make quick, easy work of King and then move on to help to help fight against Kaido, because you guys know my prediction about the Straw Hats versus Kaido, and if you haven't watched that video yet, then please do check it out. So next we've got Kid and Law versus Big Mom, which we saw in the last chapter, and this one should be fun. You know, no one was going to be able to take Big Mom on, you know, one on one, so the two teaming up makes a lot of sense. And I'm excited to see Kid's interactions with Big Mom, and maybe we can have a look at how Kid infiltrated Whole Cake Island and which commander he injured. And so Big Mom has, you know, a big reason to get big mad at Kid um, for, you know, for what happened. <laughs> And Law's strategic nature could be big in this fight because as strong as Big Mom is, she isn't the smartest fighter. You know, in terms of brute strength, I don't think anyone's beating Big Mom. But if they're somehow able to outsmart her and, you know, use her, use her immaturity against her, then I think Law is the perfect person to do this. And if they are to beat Big Mom, then I think Kid will take the final hit. I mean, sure, there's obviously going to be, you know, combined attacks, but then I think it'll be Kid to take that, you know, to deal that final blow just to solidify his, uh, his rivalry with Luffy in this arc. So then the last one is who is taking on Kaido. And I think, you know, similar to how two top tier fighters from the Alliance are needed to take on Big Mom, you know, we're going to see a similar thing with Kaido. And so I can see, you know, Luffy and Yamato uh, taking on Kaido together. 
And for now, it's just Yamato versus Kaido as we saw in the last chapter. And, you know, this should be a lot of fun. We're still yet to see what Yamato's devil fruit power is. And he's been incredibly hyped up. Plus getting to see this father-son, you know, dynamic um, in battle should be really exciting. But I do think that Luffy is going to be back soon, you know, to turn this into a two versus one with the similar idea to, you know, Kid and Law um, against Big Mom in that, you know, Luffy and Yamato are going to work well together, you know, with combined attacks here and there, and then Luffy dealing that final blow. Luffy and Kid's rivalry was highlighted earlier in the arc, and I think the war is going to finish with these highlights as well. You know, both of them dealing a massive blow uh, on Kaido and Big Mom respectively, you know, maybe with some Conqueror's Haki coating. Remember that one chapter where Luffy and Kid each took a massive blow from each of the Yonko? I think... I think we're going to see something similar, but switch sides and, you know, switch, um, switch places where we're going to see Luffy, you know, deal a massive blow on Kaido and then Kid doing the same for Big Mom, you know, with Conqueror's Haki coating and all. On top of this, we haven't seen much of what Kid can do. I mean, we've seen some of his attacks, but there hasn't been a great focus on his abilities. So similar to how Law has the Gamma Knife as his strongest technique, I think for sure, you know, Kid has some ace up his sleeve. I mean, his potential, you know, Kid's potential is huge in this arc. As a, as a magnetic devil fruit user, being in a country which mass produces weapons, I think this is the perfect place for him to showcase his abilities. Abilities. As for Luffy, well, there are lots of possibilities. I mean, are we going to see a new variation of Gear 4th? Are we going to see Gear 5th altogether? Or even possibly, you know, an awakening of his Devil Fruit ability? Because what we've seen from Luffy so far, all we've seen is him use his normal attacks, you know, coated with Conqueror's Haki. You know, we haven't seen him incorporate his Conqueror's Haki into his gear, which is, you know, then the big question, you know, can he do this? Because if the reason why he lost to Kaido recently was because his level of Conqueror's Haki wasn't enough, then how can he, how can he improve that in such a short amount of time? So, yeah we have some pretty exciting matchups ahead of us. You know, if you think that what we've been seeing now is amazing, then it's about to get even better if that was possible. And it is possible because this is One Piece. I mean, this series never fails to get me hyped up. I mean, I'm, I'm excited, guys. I'm super excited. We've got a great year ahead of us. And I have to say, I am overjoyed to accompany you guys on this journey. This is Joy Girl. I'll see you again soon.